Hi guys, here I have the first RTX 3000 series card that Asus is launching today, the RTX 3080 Tough Gaming OC. And this new Tough is a little bit of a mystery because usually high-end Asus cards would be put under their ROG banner, but this time around these Tough Gaming cards are actually considered a premium option. So. They will come with a really big and nice cooler, they will come with some extra features, and they will come with a price to match it all. Now in this video, I'll be focusing on the performance of this particular card, so if you want more information on how the RTX 3080 chip performs and how it compares to other chips, check out my review of the Founders Edition from yesterday. I don't know what the exact official price of this card will be, but uh, judging from the first leaks, this Tough Gaming 3080 is going to be a little bit more expensive than the NVIDIA Founders Edition, and I expect it to end up closer to $800 or Euros, while the Founders Edition will cost you $700 or 720 Euros. So, let's uh, check this card out, uh, see if Asus can justify this price premium, and see how it compares to other cards I've tested so far. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable, and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12-year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. The design of this card is pretty impressive actually. If you didn't know the name and just looked at the card, it would be very easy to assume it belonged to the ROG Strix line and not their affordable tough sub brand. It has a very familiar Asus shroud and the recognizable axial fans with closed sides. It does have less RGB though, with only the logo on the side lighting up. It is a very big car too, 30 centimeters long, 12.7 centimeters wide, and 5.2 centimeters thick, but it will easily fit most ATX cases. Both the back plate and the front shroud are metal as well, so it really looks and feels premium. Asus also claims this sturdy metal design will keep the card straight and prevent sagging, but I didn't have time to actually build a system using this card, so I will have to come back to you on that one. Actually, if you have any specific ideas or questions about building a new RTX 30 series gaming PC, let me know in the comments down below, as I am planning to do a little video on that very soon. Now. Similarly to NVIDIA's Founders Edition, uh, Asus decided to leave a part of the backplate open so the right fan can actually blow hot air out the back of the card as well. There are a couple of interesting features on the card itself. Uh, next to the two 8-pin power connectors, Asus put a couple of LEDs. Now, I've seen them before and on previous cards they were meant to remind you that you forgot to plug in the PCIe cable but now they say it can actually catch any inconsistencies in the power supply, uh, suggesting your PSU might be failing or might not be powerful enough, uh, and helping you solve a problem. Now, I haven't seen it in practice and I'm not sure how well it will work, but you know, it might be able to help diagnose a problem and it just doesn't hurt to have it there. They also added another HDMI 2.1 port on the back and next to that you get three DisplayPort 1.4 connectors. Now most 3080 cards will offer only one HDMI port or sacrifice a DisplayPort to add a second one and here you just get best of both worlds. Another useful feature is the BIO switch so you can swap between the default performance mode and the quiet mode. I'll talk more about those later, but a dual BIOS is always good to have for anyone that wants to tweak or, you know, flash a BIOS. So, the Tough Gaming definitely adds some extras, but it is missing the fan and the RGB headers that the old ROG Strix cards had. If you want to see all the detailed benchmarks on how the RTX 3080 compares to other chips, please check out my review of the Founders Edition from yesterday. But to summarize, on 4K resolution you can play every single game above 60 FPS at high settings and with RTX on, if it's available that is. And the fact that some AAA games will actually run at 4K and high frame rates is just something that we just haven't seen before and a very big step for high-end PC gaming in general, in my opinion. On 1440p, this card makes a great use of those high refresh rate monitors, so expect to play every game at high settings and high refresh rates, at least for you know the next couple of years. On 1080p, the RTX 3080 is an overkill. 
It is fast, but you just don't need this much power to play comfortably on 1080p. If you're a competitive player, on the other hand, on a 240Hz or an even faster monitor, it will make sense to upgrade as every frame will matter to win the game. When it comes to the tough card itself, it was on average within 1% of the uh, faster than the NVIDIA Founders Edition that already boosted itself well above the original spec. Uh, MSI's Gaming X Trio ended up being 2% faster, but like I said in my review of the MSI card, it is just too early to draw conclusions based on only three cards as boost speeds will vary from sample to sample and these 1% and 2% margins are just really thin. But it is fair to say that as long as you buy an RTX 3080 with a good cooler, you probably won't notice any difference in actual game performance. When it comes to uh, thermals and noise, uh, Asus really focused on cooling this time around. 60 degrees on a 320 watt GPU is an excellent result and it does that with a minimal fan noise. And this cooler design actually covers both the VRMs and the memory chip, so they're not really cutting any corners here. If I set all GPUs to 40 decibels at 50 centimeters distance, which I would consider to be an acceptable noise level while gaming, the ASUS and the MSI actually performed the same. That means that both MSI and ASUS are similarly efficient. NVIDIA's FE model actually doesn't do that bad either, but these bigger cards are just obviously better. So on paper, ASUS Quiet Mode is supposed to make the GPU act more like the MSI card, the letting temperatures go slightly higher, but keeping the noise levels down. Now on this card, both the performance and the quiet BIOS actually perform exactly the same under load. Now the only difference here is that the fans do not stop in idle in performance mode, but they did stop when you let the card idle in quiet mode. I do think that by the time you guys buy your retail models, you'll actually have two proper working modes uh, to choose from. And even if not, I wouldn't worry because the default performance mode should be just fine for most users out there. And that's pretty much it for this review. It is a good looking card. It has a cooler that performs well. And there are a couple of nice details like the extra HDMI 2.1 port and dual BIOS. And even with both factory BIOS profiles behaving the same at the moment, it is still a very nice bonus, I would say. And it is definitely an upgrade over the Founders Edition card, like not so much in terms of gaming performance, but it is a bit quieter and it is a lot cooler. I don't know the exact price yet, and I actually expect prices to be all over the place uh, in the coming weeks, but it will be a bit more than the NVIDIA Founders Edition or other smaller alternatives on the market. And if you are okay with that price and you like your car to run nice and very cool, it is a solid option and an okay purchase. Now that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like, subscribe to this channel to never miss an upload and see you in the next one guys. Bye.